Sorry, everybody, back with commentary. Um, this isn't live. I mean, no dare, you're watching this back. Um, so we have the Mainzel Renner in red. We have Rocklaw, uh, uh, Flo in white. Both teams yet to score a goal, and there's a call on the field. A little bit of bumping up field. But it looks like she just caught the elbow of uh, 45 player Janicka. So she will now walk off the field. That is Cassia Vijowska uh, for the flow side. She will be replaced by Titala. Round. As, as is the rain, which I think is getting into some of the electronics, connecting the Wi Fi to all of you ultimate lovers there on YouTube. So we have Mainzers setting up their vertical stack once again. With some lovely open side cuts, almost got a snag on that, and there's a deep cut going. Is it going to stay in bounds? It is, and well fielded by the number 55, Kushnitsky. He's on the sideline, not getting a lot of help. Slip dumps, but manage, oh, doesn't quite manage to get the swing off to Oldenburg Stout. And Flo immediately looking long again. It's Fijigowska. Nice off to Nedzi. Urbanik. Looking into the end zone, brilliantly taken by the diving. I think that's surreal. We'll know as soon as she gets up. No, it's Vichkowska again, getting that crucial long shot set up beautifully and then going to ground. And this is now 2-0 to flow against Mainzer. We're looking a little bit rattled themselves a little bit um, hearing some uh, some advice from Bernhard Otto who seems to be rallying his team coming into this game uh, both teams have uh, had at least two wins Flo have had three they had a game earlier today so Mainz and Renner uh, have beat UFO Mixed and Flying Rabbits KS Flow have beat uh, Sesquidiscus, UFO Mixed, and the Flying Rabbits, so um, putting them solidly at the top of pool contention if they manage to beat Mindsill today. Um, well, they've, they've, they've guaranteed their spot in the power pools at this point. Um, so Mindsill Renner, they have this, this is their first game of the day. Flow have had uh, a game earlier today, hence maybe they're why they're a bit more awake bit more on the ball or on the disc as it were. Might still have this game and then they have another game later. As I am joined in the booth by Christina down at the moment. Flo have had two quick turns after they then immediately looked deep and managed to score. Not been the cleanest ultimate so far. We've had a couple of drops, the slippery disc wanting to uh, find new masters. And that's going to be too far for Ostertag. I think a high stall situation, looking for a bailout. And Flo now have a short field turn and an opportunity for another break. Yeah, he definitely held onto that disc for a long time. Didn't really get someone free to bail him out there. And that is a red zone opportunity for Flo right here. So it looks like Flo isolating that number 12, Orbanik who puts a nice floaty round. Oh, greatest attempt by Andre Zarod, but unfortunately not able to complete the play. None of his uh, teammates there to back him up. Uh, so Mindflow will have another shot. Got Ostertag on that front cone. Good to see him not moving the cone. You need to put your foot inside the field. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Okay, well taken, not quite a Callahan. That's Irvenik again. Looking for the little dish into the end zone. Little handler give and go. And a high release flick 
finds Chaplinska in the end zone. And yet another break for this Polish team. Nifty throw there out of Urbanik, definitely anchoring this D-line offense for Flo. And Mainzu just trying to trying to be play pretty boy ultimate there, pretty mixed ultimate. Um, but in the end, just didn't manage to to do that to to swing it all the way um, to the other side of the field. That is, in my opinion, personally, of course, can cover more of the field, as you say. And we have seen uh, some of the games on this pitch in particular, which has a wind kind of going towards that far right-hand corner and a bit of a downhill slope as well. So it's not a perfectly flat pitch. Um, so just yeeting it as far as you can to the left of the field. It's not been the worst tactic for some of the teams so far. Um, but I must say, with Flo looking so kind of polished right now, who gets the assist. That is Karolin Janicka, and it is the first goal of Meitzel in this game. And I think there is a call though, a travel. Oh no. Although one could already see here with this point why Mainz is doing so well on the women's side as well, because they, they're women really dominating this point. Still a bit of recognition doesn't hurt. That's very true, that's very true. So there's gonna be a bit of a discussion and the disc is gonna go back. One might argue an open side pass would not be affected by a travel that much, but... I think, yeah, it's dicey calling it's travel in slippery conditions like these as well. I agree, but it's the players... Like, it's not giving your receiver a chance for that disc. He is amazingly quick. Just put it up there, put a little bit of an angle in. There's no reason that shouldn't work. Oh. Nice big pivot. This is love. This That's is what I love. Mean. Oh, getting up high, even higher than Blackwood, poached off the number and a pick call. Good hand signals. And Mainz just look defeated as they walk back to their own end zone line. Third time's a charm. This was this was a throw with a lot of hang time. Enough enough yards for the receiver to just run run down and collect that goal for for Flo to make it 4-0. Yes. As now we got Celeb coming in instead of me, Benji Rees. <laughs> Thanks so much for filling in, Christina. Anytime. Enjoy the rest of the game. Oh, I think I've just about recovered. <laughs> that was honestly the most insane game on the other field between Costa Rica Grandes and Free Speed, where Free Speed nearly had a ridiculous comeback. They were got a few on the bounce, and then uh, Costa Rica in, won it with a Callahan. So that was. Oh my word! <laughs> Black under throws the swing, palmed opportunity to grab it at the second attempt. Well taken by Special. Now Krotlinski looks downfield. Turns, isolates the reset. Just a little pop off to Bach. Once again, it's this very quick uh, turns from Flo, wasting no time in getting the disc moving that Mainz has been struggling to contain. And, well, opposite of quick disc movement there. Move it and just take the time out just to cool things up. I mean, you're up 5-0 in this game. It feels like you're cruising, but you don't want to take your foot off the gas and you don't want to create yourself, get into bad habits necessarily. Yeah, Froebel, I think maybe just seeing, I'm sorry, I probably haven't pronounced that right, but just seeing maybe that not a lot of movement from the stack, acknowledging that uh, this is a relatively small uh, flow roster, um, not wanting to tire them out too much, um, and also maybe just perhaps reminding them of their cutting patterns or getting them into a more organized position. Um, and this is an opportunity for Mainz to maybe give a, give a little bit of a pep talk to, this, to the defense and try and clamp down on this... Uh, very fluid Polish side. Would you like some breaking news? Give me some breaking news. So oh, those yeah. 520 matchups that we're streaming like after this game, things mm -hmm. in the open free quarters, mm -hmm. we have them confirmed. In gear, Ooh. perhaps on this pitch, yeah, field three. Uh, it's going to be uh, a Eurozone of old. It's got a bit of air underneath it. It's going to ask a question. Uh, the Czech Republic's foy up against Czech from Pornichet in France. 
And I'm going to be back over to field two because I am uh, apparently a mad person who likes running back and forth. Uh, I've got an all German affair. I'm with Hannah oh. for uh, MUC, the Munich Ultimate Club, up against Berlin's Walled City. Oh, wonderful. And I th believe you've got Christina with you for that one who can do the help you with the pronunciation. Yes, yeah, I, I imagine she will, be, she will be in and around the area of field two. Yes, I'm, I honestly... It's like, it's coming so thick and fast. 90 minute games and 100 minutes fast. You've barely got time to think before you're back into it. As a, as a viewer, it's, uh, it's intense, but you know, having this much ultimate to watch and able to watch it for free on RTTV's YouTube channel, it's, uh, it's not a bad problem to have. Yeah, and uh, the stream may be laggy, but these games will be uploaded later and you will be able to catch them up on demand at your viewing pleasure. I know there are a lot of people working from home in uh, quite quotation quite. marks. And, ah, oh, the curse of the turnout strikes. The high-release backhand, overthrown, falls straight into Mainz-Alena's clutches, yes, and now they're on the move. Here's Havaria. Did you see Nils? He just doesn't stop running. He was so free for that deep cut. And he's still running now. This time he gets it underneath. Ostertag tries to squeeze it down the sideline. <sighs> Ever so slightly, maybe an inch or two too high. Fionnitschka, and she's got a long reach, but especially on the slick turf, can't quite have the speed, can't quite spring up off the grass. Another turnover, so the disc lands back in Flo's clutches. Yeah, there have been quite a few for Janicka and Oldenburg Stout, both very tall players that have just been a little bit too tall for them. Nice switch. A beautiful put deep, but just doesn't hold the flatness, not the flatness, the direction is what I meant to say. Mm. It's a long day, and it curls back towards the middle of the pitch and difficult to read it when it's curling over your head like that. But they will at least gain some field positioning back. And that's excellent heads up defense from Janicka, seeing the cut go and knowing exactly where to run on the field to make sure she had the maximum chance of blocking out uh, the Polish player. So they lead it towards this near sideline. Padar now goes back into the middle of the field, running it through those handlers a little bit nicely. This one's gonna float. We've seen how good flow are in the air. That time a beat late, continue down the sideline, no! It might be that kind of game for Mainz-Sellerena and that won't please any of their fans watching in Germany. But sometimes it just seems like it won't go your way. I mean, this is just absolutely heartbreaking for me as a German <laughs> and I'm sure the, play, the team on the pitch, they just, they've had so many shots to goal and so many clap catch bobbles, bread basket drops. It just really feels like there's some kind of unkind deity. Well, now we'll see if Polish prayers can be answered. When you've got, wow, it feels like that happens more often than not. Now turns to find a receiver in the end zone. No one's coming free. A lovely little use of the roll curve over the top to hit the receiver in stride. 6-0, and every one of those are break alley. I mean, if you're my how do you, how do you keep finding the energy to go back out there when it feels like someone's got it out for you? I mean, I think you really just have to take the mentality that it is nil-nil, game to one. You take each point as it comes. Don't even think about the scoreboard. You know, if it helps to think that this game isn't their most crucial of the tournament, then that's something to focus on. If that doesn't help and it's even going to make you, you know, more complacent or, you know, let your heads drop and, oh, this doesn't even matter, then, again, think, if we want to get to the final, imagine this is the final. We have a big hill to climb, but this is what we train for. This is what we practice for. You know, it's possibly the first tournament for for some of these teams in a long time because of the unprecedented circumstances. So... The, because of the what, sorry? The unprecedented circumstances. Oh, sorry, yes, I yeah, I just yeah, can't, yeah. can't bring myself to say that really, you know, without <sighs> screwing my face up. Without, yeah, without, without dying a little inside. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, you know, this is an opportunity to play against the best in Europe as the best in Europe. You want to make it last as long as possible. Fielded on the roll by Mainz Arena. Faking around, not really seeing a lot. Barton takes advantage of the face mark to just pop it over Zarod's head. A little bit of creativity there, I like that. Barton. Long pivots from a long boy. 
Nice little, they're running the Dominator. They eventually get Koshnitsky three. The diminutive Dynamo puts it deep, but it's over the head of Paltzer. Looks like it was just coming in at a slightly awkward angle, and you know, you went up a bit too early. Because it was floating very nicely. And is this the second disc that we're going to be throwing off the pitch? This is why you use Euro discs, people. Eurodisc are one of the sponsors for the tournament, I believe. Yeah, but I don't know if many teams have been taking advantage of, uh, of using them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, I think it is uh, Eurodisc are providing the official tournament discs and then Lucky Grass, who are doing all the various merch that's available and Tokai Cleats as well, are also partnered with the tournament here in Bruges, where the TDs are doing an admirable job, especially considering that the elements seem to have it cut out for them a little bit today. Yeah, there's, uh, we've definitely angered some kind of rain deity. Maybe it was Mainzer. Maybe that's why they're dropping all of these discs. Yeah. I don't know anything about German history, mythology. Well, I know. Uh, basically the same as Norse. Just oh. slightly different names. That'll do. This one, wow, it's absolutely laser deep and could have been the most unbelievable of plays with someone able to snag it. As it is, they're playing a little bit of field position as my Selena will pick this up right on their end zone line. How about I do with that pronunciation, by the way? Is it terrible? Uh, well, I can't comment on the Polish pronunciation. Just, I mean, just, I'll just, all I need is as long as I can get my Selena, just about, okay. Oh, my Selena. Yeah, the R is hard. You can just say Mainz. That's also uh, hard. <laughs> job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Oh, using the offhand lefty again, sneaking it past the face marking handler defender. Now down the far sideline, big demonstrative fake. Gets Urbanek out of position. Pascal really rolls his wrist around that one. Bernard Otto. Been a formidable figure at the top of the German game for so oh. long. Oh, oh Mel Koschnitzky. Stop it. Just stop it. She flew. She legitimately flew. And then finally they get on the board with Otto. Floating one to the end zone. Natalia Botero brings it in, I think, in the end. Finally, finally, Mainz Arena are on the board. And that is girl power in action. We had an incredible save. And then two women, miles free in the end zone, both of them ready to snaffle up that disc and give Mainz their first goal of this game. One of the reasons that I've been so excited to... Uh, to come to, e to XECF is to see all these players that I've been starved of watching for a couple of years. And when I knew that Mainz and Reno were, were here, I was thinking about that kind of, and they've got so many good players, but especially those power trio of women as you get a replay of that ridiculous Koshnitsky guy. I think about Yelichka, Koshnitsky, Hosokawa. I've been, it's been far too she long flew. since I've seen players of that caliber live and in the flesh. And it's a brilliant put into space for the goal. Just some really beautiful, fluid offense from the Mainz runner. And hopefully we can see uh, them get a turn and narrow the gap between them and Flo. Honest, I still, I, I, I think I will go to bed at night dreaming about that layout from Koshnitsky. Oh, just perfectly in front of the camera as well. <laughs> so we're seeing a bit of a zone look from the Mainz runner now. Interesting, this, this is their first D point. So, you know, they've been obviously been saving this up for a while. We'll see how Flo deal with it at the moment. Doesn't necessarily seem to have uh, disrupted them too much. The odds not seeming to be in Mainz's favour as both the rain and the wind have really died down here. It is still wet though, and that disc is still slick. Obviously, the grass underneath foot is gonna be slick as well. It's turning up ever so slightly, so there's a bit of mud to come into play. So it is possible to lose your footing, Kratlinski. Goes across, now in towards the centre of the pitch. Back into the hands of Kroflinski. Low break out to space for Boak. He's got it. Left foot lands in bounds. 7-1 to fly. Well, they've been waiting, uh, waiting seven points to see that O-line in full flow. Seven points to get the uh, to cook up that zone for uh, Mainzofrena. Didn't quite work. Yeah, you can see Otto just kind of signalling a goal there and then sort of shrugging in frustration as he walks onto the, uh, or towards the line rather, because 
The, 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 it looked like the purpose of that zone was to try and stop shots upfield and force kind of dumping and swinging. But Flo managed to get off two shots through the zone, one floaty one to uh, Blach, and then another kind of high release between uh, two players in the cup to break that zone. So obviously, first point of zone, it may not necessarily be perfect. If they come out with it again, they might tighten up on it. But they have to, another O point now. And um, six points is a lot to try and make up. So just trying to give you a little bit of a uh, flavor of what's going on elsewhere around the field site here. Some more mixed action. Salaspil tied at two with Monkey from Grenoble. Ufo and Flying Rabbits at once. Last we heard, 7-7 seven, seven between Leftovers and Puti. As this one goes deep, and well, defender slipped and that allowed the receiver to catch it. I think there's gonna be a uh, infraction back on the throw, a foul or a travel perhaps of some sort. It's just about to get to uh, my soul and his uh, compatriots, Colorado. Uh, they're 5-3 down to Hrutz, uh and elsewhere in the women's division as well. Some more German teams in action. Uh, Heidelbergen uh, at 5-all with Valkyria. Uh, uh, Flowers of Poland are tied at 5s with 3SB. And uh, over on field 2, which is the other show pitch, uh, Love from uh, Leuven here in Belgium are up 3-1 on Terrible Monkeys. But disc back in play, it will stay downfield. For Maitsorena. Might have been a case of the foul being called, but then the oh my word. <laughs> Sorry, I was <laughs> I was as flabbergasted as you. Narrow window, but continue to power through and attack the disc, and I think that's going to go back on a travel. Oh sad. But wow, the second incredible layout uh, right in front of our second camera here. Perfect, hopefully able to, to capture it. But. And just comes absolutely steaming through. Oh. And now takes off looking for a double happiness. The disc is tailing away. And I think Peran now got just enough of a touch on it, or at least got enough in the way to prevent it going into the hand of Milanovic. Yeah, it looks like Bukin. That's her second D on a male player, which I'm really loving for her. Incredibly difficult huck. You know, that's cut her on the same third of the field. And now they're looking deep for Koshnitsky. Well, she's not going to have to lay out for this one because it's right in stride. A couple of players are advancing. Simple lead pass through to Bechtold. And that is now 7-2. And it feels like, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of time left in this game. There's plenty of time for a potential comeback full of Maitalina. And if that is going to happen, I feel like a lot of it might come through Koshnitsky. <laughs> I think you would definitely be right there. And I think what really uh, was lovely to see was that the Mainz Arena were able to get that quick turn, which has been so devastating um, by Flo against them. So now that they're starting to play a little bit uh, kind of on that, on that Polish level, maybe too early to say, but I think the Mainz Arena are starting to get it together. Will it be too late? I think if you're Mainz Arena, maybe you're not thinking about the whole comeback. You're thinking about okay, we'll get, we'll work on you know we'll win the next game to three you know we'll 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 get to we'll win the next point you know if we're close we'll try and eke out that you know you set yourself little smaller goals rather than because if you look at the big picture sometimes it can feel insurmountable so you set yourself those little guidelines along the way and who if you keep and if you keep matching and meeting those targets all of a sudden you look at the big picture and it's not so lopsided. It's, yeah, it's all those tiny optimizations, a bit like the British cycling team. And this Polish deep game has been incredible so far, but, oh! And in the end zone as well. I think the receiver feels like she maybe got away with that one as well. I think it's Maya Kozak, but yeah. credit to her because trusted her read, didn't get suckered in by the traffic in the middle, held firm and held the disc. And that's an 8-2 half-time lead for Flo from Wrocław. I mean, that's just an absolutely incredible performance um, from Flo, really putting on a clinic here of uh, how to play in kind of muddy and windy conditions. Uh, I'm wondering if perhaps they're a bit more uh, used to inclement weather um, as the, the Mainz Arena perhaps are. So, yeah, I think the Mainz, Mainz Arena have to really kind of think about what they're doing um, and, and adapt to try and clamp down on some of this a, this deep game, and B, these quick turns from Flo. The uh, 
the Mycelle Helena Brain Trust has evidently got some task on their hands in this second half because as it currently stands, you know, 8 2 down, there's an awful lot of work to do. So I heard just before this game, so obviously Mainz and Mädchen are the more perhaps famous team uh, from uh, Mainz. However, uh, six, you heard me, six of their female players all um, had children over the lockdown, over the last kind of two years. So they are n not yet ready uh, to return to... The ultimate thing. <laughs> Well, uh, I won't say what my first thought was when I uh, when I heard that, but um, yeah. So they've uh, they've made this mixed team. Obviously, uh, a lot of the men on this side have been playing uh, for quite a few years, but I think, I mean, you wouldn't know it to uh, to look at them, but I think a lot of the more experienced women um, from Mainz are not here. I mean, I, I, I they must be formidable as a women's team with this depth, considering how great. Uh, the German women have been so far. Yeah, I think the player most conspicuous by their absence is probably Kyoko Hosokawa, who is an absolute powerhouse. But... The ultimate things in life are free. We're well, you don't have the full roster available, and you have to make the most of that. I think you may have seen a part of a commercial there. We'll show you the uh, <laughs> show you the full one later. <laughs> there's a, if there's another timeout called, we'll make sure you uh, get to hear all about us. Um, but uh, in the meantime, do you remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. Do ring that bell um, to get notified. It does help us out. Helps us put us in more people's recommended and bring them free ultimate content. So in the, uh, well, not so much wind, but certainly in the rain here at Bruges, the second half gets underway in this mixed Pool D matchup. Five teams in each pool of four here in the mixed division. And a battle of previously undefeated size is so currently going the way of the poles. Down that far sideline, catch in band. Daniel Boach, who at field... He's been phenomenal this game, and he is certainly a name to watch for future tournaments as well. So it looks like the Mites are still sticking with their zone. It's quite a loose cup this time. Oh, and a great bid from Otto. He's been doing that for years, and he's going to continue to do it as this one into the middle. It allows the defender playing deep to close in quickly. I think you could see exactly what Blach wanted there, but there was just a few too many players in the way of his vision. High release backhand goes to Otto. There's a cutter that's taken off deep. Instead, it's a high release. And you could see there that the player just lost his footing. And now they're going to shoot deep, looking for Boak. It's an awkward read, but one that he is more than equal to for a 9-2 score. Not the clean hold they would have liked to start the second half, but they are still building that advantage. And I think we're seeing it again and again. As soon as there is a turn, Flo is immediately there. Everyone on their team is immediately looking to cut and get the disc, or at least, you know, enough of them are. They're not cutting all at the same time. And mine's is just that little bit slower, that tiny bit more sluggish. And um, it seems like they're taking it just a little bit more casually as this very, very focused Polish side. I think something that has impressed me is the fact that they're keeping their foot on the gas. It would be easy after, you know, you're building a big margin to kind of ease off slightly. You know, maybe you maybe you loosen your lines a bit more. Like you, you throw something a little bit different out there. But I feel like until it is truly out of sight, probably because they know the quality that this Manchester team can possess, they're keeping, their, they're keeping it, you know, full pedal to the metal, making sure that they don't allow any sniff of a comeback and also trying to keep themselves in the, you know, best possible shape and best possible form for the brackets later on. We had uh, number 47 there, really thinking about the deep put. And looking at the underneath pass, going for that inside, but the defender had that lane through, and again, full intensity, run through D to slap it to the floor. 
Payong picks up. On the near sideline, faking, faking, doesn't like it. Goes back to Pionk. Takes a reset off. Not a lot going on downfield at the moment for Flo, but you have to credit their, uh, their patience and the discipline to work it through the handlers when they need a little bit of physicality on that handler. Cut on there just playing it around the back pretty comfortably at the moment. Now Chaplinska, pretty good pickup to have for this flow side. High release is faked, goes back. Urbanic, back to Payank. Big wide pivot, low into space, right on the money for Silvia Ziantala. Another break for Flo, 10-2. I'll tell you what, if they can keep this up all tournament, they're not just, they're not just favourites to win this pool, they're favourites to have a good run in the bracket as well. Yeah, they look in ominous form. Yeah, really, really dominant, taking absolutely no prisoners from this German side. They are punishing every tiny mistake that the Mainzer Renner make. And that is the thing. There are, you know, it's, it's n for, there have been some unforced errors from Mainzer Renner. It would be, it would be churlish perhaps to not bring that up occasionally. But when, but that, you know, they've capitalized on those unforced errors and they have forced errors as well. They forced them to take riskier throws because perhaps there's the, the options they want aren't quite open. It's been a complete consummate performance so far from the polls. We're only just past 45 minutes into this game and the score is 10-2. We have scored <laughs> 12 points been scored in 45 minutes, which is, you know, absolutely ridiculous, especially considering some of the games we've had on this pitch have been very, very low scoring given the uh, rather unfortunate conditions. Um, this pull is also, wow, it's going to very nearly hit our camera, uh, cameraman on the head, but it's going to land inside the pitch. Just an uh, opportunity to make sure that you've got your head on a swivel there. Jeez. Oh, trying to take advantage of the face mark. Wow, Yanichka just about squeezed that over Kroklinski's head. And now the deep put comes. It's pretty much been deep dominant so far from Flo, but that one is rail red by Havaria. And he goes back to Yanichka. Yanichka takes the opportunity to hit the cutter in stride. Much better. Offensive point that from Mainz-Salona. It's their first of this second period. They've gone up. Well, I said they've gone up. They've closed their deficit. They are still 10-3 down, but it's a better than 10-2. I think it is uh, Perra now, who's had a pretty good game, given the circumstances for Mainz-Salona, on the reception in the end. And that is... It might have been a bit of a high stall situation potentially uh, for Otto, um, but certainly able to execute a very beautiful and floaty huck uh, to Angel in the, sorry, that's not the right pronunciation, uh, but <laughs> he was able to get it uh, in just the right place with just the right amount of float on it. Um, well, you say it's not the right pronunciation. It feels like Otto saw perhaps a vision of something downfield. Oh, well done. Well yeah, done. I, wasn't, I wasn't unhappy with that, I'll be honest. And <laughs> we talked about this a little bit at uh, WGGMBUCC as well in Sardinia earlier this week, that there is an art to the high stall throw. It's not just, th you know, jack it as far as you can. It's show a little bit of that underside. Get some air underneath it. So you give a receiver a chance to make a play. That was an equally lovely floaty pull, giving the mind to the defense a chance to come down and set up. More zone coming from Mainz Arena. Do you tend to see a decent amount of zone in the mixed division, I think? Trying to perhaps get the uh, get a bit more size downfield. And they've got Roche deep, which is bold considering you've got Black on this line, but fantastic to see that amount of trust. Yeah, they feel like they're trying to stretch Barton in the middle here. High release backhand towards the far sideline for Vrobel back into the handler set. This is very patient from Flo, but there's not quite the synergy between the upfield and the downfield. Well, commentator's curse there, because rather, Prasiv Balak makes the catch. You can hear the call for the transition into match defense, but I don't know if the players were quite ready for that in the right position. Underneath is Nedzi. Pivots around, squares up, isolates the reset. Now trying to get set into a vertical setup downfield. Wants the break towards the front of the stack, doesn't take it. 
Actually, this transition's come off pretty seamlessly because they're really forcing Flo to work for any options, and there's no continuation. The cutter gets it downfield. It's going back into the handlers as they're shooting it deep for Boak. Oh, oh it's ever so slightly misjudged for Royce. And that's agonizing because it feels like she read that brilliantly. She peeled off the back, did her best to knock it to the turf, but agonizingly out of reach. And Boak eventually catches it in stride for an 11 3 lead. Woof, that was close. They just about got away that one with that one did flow. Yeah, it really seems like every step that the Mainz Arena takes towards trying to clamp down on this flow deep game is met with another pushback. You know, if you poach, we'll work it up. Or if you put a zone, we'll work it up. And then as soon as you transition to man, we're going to dump it back and throw it half of the length of the field anyway. So 11-3, the current score between Flo and Mainz-Solrena. Feels like maybe as a con, maybe in terms of the result, it's out of reach at the moment for the Germans. But I mean, firstly, until you have to score the last point in ultimate, it's never over. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you've got an important game coming up later today, uh, later today, right? Mm. Um, against Seskidistus. Mm. So you want to finish this game strongly to make sure that you're in a position where you can build from the you can build from the back end of this game, work work out a couple of kinks. So that you're on, so that you feel like you're in a much better position when you start your last game today. And it's a truism that you learn more from a defeat than you do from a victory. So, you know, with this, with uh, the Mainz are going to having another game later today, they may in theory be much more prepared. As the mustachioed <laughs> bit of ice puts it downfield, but the defenders in the way to slap it to the turf. And that is another turn for Flo. It feels like the wind has potentially picked up a bit and uh, meant that that blade didn't sit out as far in front as initially intended. So a slow turn for once from Flo, setting up in the horizontal stack. Into the middle, a slide into the ground is Zarod. I love his hair. It's, it's very distinctive, isn't it? Looks like he's dyed a lot of his scalp as well as his actual hair. I have always wanted to dye my hair blue and then always lacked the gumption. So I, uh, anyone, who, anyone who has the uh, stones to do so is to be celebrated. But that one bounces off his hands and Maestrano looked to get it into play quickly. And now Oshevsky's on the floor as well. Ostertag looking upfield. Turn to find right ice at the reset. You can really see players beginning to lose their footing there. Narrow oh. window. And the bid maybe did just enough to prevent it from working its way into Perano's hands. This is why you clear out after you make a cut, because if you do not, your defender is hanging around in the open space and is able to cause heaps of travel for your offense. Just got to throw it harder, mate. Easy. Oh, not <laughs> in this weather, my God, Benji. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly. There's no eel stick if you throw it slow. I know you were talking about olive oil on all of the discs last week, but this rain is doing much the same job. It is testing conditions. Bid comes in attempting the Callahan, not there. Very good adjustment of the feet as well, because you can really see players all over the shop with the rain hammering down here in Bruges. And Becker spending more time on the floor than on his feet. Not that you can blame him in these conditions. It is testing, very testing. And now they're gonna try and put it deep. Catch is made, I think it's out of bounds, no. Apparently does enough to land on the line, inside the line. But maybe there's going to be a bit of discussion about it. Either a foul or a line call. I think it's an uncontested foul, which should... It's difficult to see the sideline on the far side of the pitch, but certainly okay. no one questioned the landing. I think and it was maybe a marking infraction because it was uncontested. No. Oh, wow. Okay, no. Wow, Ostertag with the foot block to get the disc back. I love to see it. I had the distinct pleasure of playing with Nils um, a few years ago at Windmill, and he is an incredibly solid player and also one of the happiest and nicest people. Well, a foot block there to hopefully uh, make you proud, Ali. Here's Janicka. Kata takes off up line, doesn't like it, doesn't like the reset though either. So now with the stall count rising, tries to get some air underneath it. And Bashevsky has a bit of space to attack it. Uncorks an absolute bomb deep. Wow, hits Zarod in stride. 
That is some break from Wotswav. And you can see, as soon as that turn happens, they must drill this over and over. Is there is a flow player immediately going deep? So they always have that option. It takes the defense completely by surprise. And they've shown time and time again that they have those throws um, to put in those deep puts. The score is now 13-3. Uh, no, it isn't, sorry. It's 12-3. Uh, but, I mean... I don't really know what, what what I would say as a captain to Mainz at this Anytime point. Anytime you feel like they get a play that will put a bit of energy back, this is why I think momentum is not a thing. But, you, you know, you get a big foot block. Oh, yeah, the momentum now is surely got to be with... Surely got to be with Mainz right now. And then, oh, one floats a bit. So, yeah, Mishevsky steams through. Bombs it deep to Zarod. Oh, all of a sudden the momentum's all disappeared and it's in the hands of, uh, of the Poles once more. And, you know, full credit to Flo because... This is, I think, more than any other, maybe across this tournament, a statement victory here for Flo. Not just as a team this tournament, but perhaps as a program when you come up against a strong side like this and you absolutely put them to the sword. Yeah, I think it's not just it's not just winning the pool, but it's going undefeated and it's being absolutely dominant in the score lines as well. Down line. He just didn't have enough on it. And it meant that Mashevsky underneath could clean it up. It's incredibly athletic plays we're seeing from Flo. Sorry, is uh, Milanovic on that D? Excuse me, I shall correct myself. Zientala, ever so slightly floaty on the reset to Arbanic, but not a problem. Now, right on this near sideline. Mashevsky with the distinctive blue hair. Finds Milanovic on the near side. You can see the mud on the back of the shirts, on the shorts, being kicked up from the turf. Dish into the end zone for Vidskovska. 13-3, and it feels like the end is in sight. Yeah, just an absolute beating being sustained by the Mainzer Renner here. And I think... Maybe, maybe Flo have got somewhere to be and they're trying to close this game out early. It's, uh, I mean, there are various adjectives to, to use. It's a bit of a boat, I think given the weather, I'd call it a bit of a boat racing. A boat racing? Yeah, you've never, you never heard someone got, abs oh yeah, mate, they were, you know, they were, they were played off the park, they got absolutely boat raced. I think I'd almost say mud rustled at this point. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't feel doesn't feel uh, inapt given the uh, given the conditions underfoot, and this is you know no fault of the ground staff here, but mm. it has hammered it down today. And when you know, ultimately the support I feel is very unforgiving on grass a lot of the time, because you're constantly turning and planting and changing direction, and those stubs are just kind of tearing the grass out of the ground. It's, uh, but then you go over to the astroturf field, and then that gets slick as well, and you can't hold your footing there. It's a it's an unenviable situation for players and for ground staff. And it's only going to get worse throughout the weekend. I mean, the Astros oh, don't say that. Stay, the Astros going to stay slippery, but uh, these fields are going to get more and more churned up. And that's going to that's that's a test. Can you play your best ultimate when conditions are not in your favour? Well, I think uh, we know the answer for both of these teams. Seems like one is a resounding yes, and the other one. Not so much. Not so much, yeah. High release black break from Koshnitsky down the sidelines, gonna pop through the hands. And it feels like perhaps when those have happened for Fly, they've been able to regather them, but it hasn't quite broke that way for Mainz Arena. Well, you can see kind of that, that commitment even on the way down of uh, that bid from uh, Kutlinski, he was still trying to D the disc as it fell past his face and just make sure that no one else had a chance on it. And we see yet another deep cut. But Re it's going to be smacked away! Hey, who else but Mel Kutlinski? Smallest player on the pitch. Does that matter? Not one iota because she got position and she went up early and she parried it out of play. And I love to see it. <laughs> Doing it for short people everywhere. It's interesting, you've got a very, you've got 
kind of two quite tall players on opposing teams marking two quite smaller players that are on opposing teams. Oh, I thought you were going to say that I like it's like oh yeah every time any, anyone short does anything good I would I would immediately bring them up on it and you know what I will yes. Oh uh, yes yes. <laughs> I fully. I, I fully felt that didn't necessarily need stating. <laughs> this one bounces off the fingers of Perra now who's had a very good game but couldn't stick that one. Flo just two points away from closing out this game. We're coming up to an hour of runtime. Special tries to isolate Brack at the front of the end zone and they go to swing instead. But a rare misstep there from Flo will give the disc back to Maitsalvena. Yeah, Nedzi just couldn't keep her feet. That particular patch of ground is getting particularly churned up. Ilichka sees the deep cut take off early but doesn't like it. Maybe the matchup not there. Player peels off to cover the deep and it leaves the player wide open. Astonishing bid that doesn't get there from Special, but he's right back on his feet as the disc is swung towards the centre. Benavis down the far sideline for Koshnitsky, threads the needle off the fingertips of Sven Becker. Who throws his hat to the ground in disgust. That was some really, really lovely offence from the Mainzer runner, and we've seen this a few times now where their offensive flow is absolutely perfect. They're working it really nicely up the break side, and then that last pass in the end zone just doesn't go their way. Sometimes it's just not your game, but you've got to keep plugging away, and Mainzer runner have done that. It's going to reset her feet to position in the pitch. A couple of players deep in the end zone. That's a bold reset. Instead, they find Bach on the under. Looking downfield, doesn't like it. Isolates the reset. It's low, just about gets a hand underneath it. De Special, and he's absolutely lasered this deep. And, well, not even Bach's going to be able to get to that. Yeah, that, I don't think that came in at all. Uh, so... Uh, or maybe it did. It's quite hard to tell because uh, this pitch has a little bit of a slope on it. So, no, perhaps uh, a bit cheeky from uh, Rovel there. <laughs> we tried to just put it put it on the, on the pitch, but uh, it's going to be walked all the way down to about the brick mark. And a violation, I think, is going to be called. A uh, so little bit of chatting going on between... Kutlinski and Binavis. Looks like we've got Sarod coming on potentially as an interpreter. It's one of the things that I think I certainly forget about as someone fortunately have to play ultimate in the in the in the mother tongue, in the parent language of the sport, is that you know, there are sometimes you get matchups where players do not share mutual languages in common and the language of ultimate is not necessarily a primary language for uh, for them either. And so that does happen sometimes where it is a question of needing an interpreter to work out those calls. Oh, Here's Koshnitsky. Pivots utilising the full width of her wingspan. Excellent fundamentals. Underneath is Parar now. Low and just rolls off the fingertips there of the receiver. So back in play. Swung all the way across a little floater for Boa. And there's a pick down field. Good to see the hand signals coming out, signaling which way to the beach. Uh, unfortunately for us, that was earlier in the week. <sighs> not that I'm not that I'm complaining about being here. Honestly, I am. You, like I'm, I feel like a kid at Christmas. You can't <laughs> say it because I got a mask on at the moment, but I am. I'm beaming from here to here. And also, thankfully, there's no commentator cam. This one is uh, yeah picked quite early on. Going to make the catch anyway. Good, I, I must admit, it was always going to go back, so he could have done a little bit of showbiting underneath it. I wouldn't have complained, although maybe he could have said that was slightly disrespectful. Who knows? Yep. Anyway. And if it's, uh, you know, it would have been a turn also. If he drops it, yes. <laughs> but imagine if he'd gone for the dab and grab. Would look like an absolute king. Dab and grab. Hey, say what you want. I, I, I justify it. I'll, I'd have let him off. And well, same again. Yeah, uh, Glasto rules, I guess. Do it again. What a clap catch layout from Special and continued into the end zone. Well, conservation of greatness. Sod the conservation of greatness. Layout, full extension, brilliant. Get up, ram it deep on the money. 14 13 game points and 11 of them for the poles. Yes, uh, 14 3 the score. We haven't had. Um, 
10 Mainzel scores when you weren't looking. That would have been incredibly incredible. Right, so they've got 11 game. Oh, th okay, I see what, you, yeah. This is why, this is also why people don't, this is also why double game point is also annoying. There's terminology. You know what I mean, right? They've got 11 chances to win. Ah. Uh, Twelve. They've got twelve chances That's to win. Actually, what you were going for. technically they've got twelve chances to win because if it goes to fourteen 0 we don't play like a, you don't play like a super bonus cap. There's no win by two. It is just for hard score cap at fifteen. Yeah, win by two is a, a weird thing in my opinion. What is this tennis? So, pa so obviously Paganello is going on around the same time. There is the mysterious Paga cap where if because it was it used to be cap plus two, I think. So if you scored it to, for the cap point at 14, in games to 15, you could theoretically play a game to 16. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I might have to think about it. Oh, it, it's bad, but it is funny. Disc just took Otto for a little run there. This one's high. It's going to invite a maelstrom of defenders and receivers underneath it, comfortably plucked out of the air by Zadrod. Uh, there might be a potential uh, infraction on the throw, though. Travel. See Good. the hand signal there. They will get the disc back in the hands. So Flo with a chance to take game after less than 70 minutes here. So I think the discussion about the throw and go is that there was a lot of go and not enough throw. Oh, completely jukes the colour on the ground. Not quite a literal ankle breaker, thankfully, but left her in the dust. Zarod, re-swinging, back into the centre, trying to utilise the field to its full width. There's an opportunity for a deep cut there. The timing's not quite right, though. Pivots, breaks around, but towards this near sideline. Payonk's right in front of us, and he goes back in towards the centre, and now towards the far sideline. Just comfortable playing it around the back until it comes underneath. Oh. That's a brilliant high grab to climb the ladder on a reception that maybe had no right by Liskanovska. And now a shot for goal is gonna stick as well. And a more dominant performance of between undefeated sides. You could not have hoped to see. Bundle in the end zone. Wow, 15-3 flow have dispatched of Mainzel Renner. And I'll be honest, I did not see that one coming. I mean, I really don't think anyone did. I th this is... Basically, as far as I can tell, out of nowhere, none of Flo's games were as dominant. They've maybe been hiding their light under a bushel, perhaps, so far this tournament. But, gosh, I think this Polish side is going to go very far well, over the weekend. If they were sandbagging earlier in the tournament, just kind of hiding a little, you know, just, just, just disguising a little bit of their full potential, maybe we saw it in full today. And if Flo can keep up this form, they could go very, very deep this year, this week. And I can't wait to see it because, as a side, that was an absolute delight to watch. Because that game's wrapped up nice and quickly, we've got a chance to take a little bit of a break. Uh, we will be back in play on this field in half an hour's time. As we mentioned, that is going to be open pre-quarter matchups uh, taking place on this field. I had the I had these written down to. Yeah, it is Foy versus Chuck. So uh, the Czech Republic versus France on this field. On the other field, it's the all German encounter between MUC and Wall City. Just trying to remember which German teams it was in the end. <laughs> so uh, Berlin versus Munich here and uh, ostensibly Prague versus Pornische over on field three. Uh, if you have enjoyed today's game, don't worry because we mentioned there are plenty more. There is still mixed pool action to come at the end of the day at 7 o'clock local time as well. But 5.20 local time in half an hour for those open pre-quarter matchups. Uh, if you've enjoyed our coverage, then you can, of course, do all what is, quote unquote, all the good stuff on YouTube, which is liking, subscribing. There's a little bell button that I understand you hit for notifications and seeing a highlight reel of what was a sensational game as well. The ultimate things in life are free. And we're Actually, it is greatly appreciated because we're trying our best in testing conditions, especially today, and, uh, and often not necessarily the, the largest of budgets. And if everyone who was able to, who watched and enjoyed the streams was able to chip a little bit in, then 
I feel like there is a potential for something really special to take place. And to bring you more games and more performances like that, you can find the link to our, our Patreon in the YouTube description. And full details are on our website. That is www.ulti.tv. Indeed, I echo all of that. <laughs> Excellent. I think I need to have a lie down. Coming straight from the uh, uh, Costa Rica free speed match to that, it's been a uh, bit of a roller coaster, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Thank you very much for watching Ulti.tv's coverage of XUCF. As we mentioned, next game on this pitch, 5.20 local time. Foy versus Shaq in the uh, open pre-quarter matchups. And for all our Ulti.tv crew, for Ali Thomas, I've been Benji Reese, and we will see you on the other side. See you then. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, now, team. The We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. TV.